Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. Bob Walker, that is. Um, this is going to be the continuation of the Enoch study. Like I say, I'm I'm kind of on the fence about Enoch. I don't know. There's some things I agree with, and then there's some things that are really kind of far out there. But uh, up until chapter 45 i haven't seen anything that really disqualifies it i don't know you know take it with a grain of salt uh let's see before we start chapter 45 it talks about the uh the name of the lord and you know, all the sacred name people, it's funny that how they want you to not use the name Jesus, and they want you to use a name that they use, well, the, the Antichrist use as a curse against Jesus. Yeah, they want you to use a name that's a curse. But not only that, I mean, if you want to use sacred name that's in the Old Testament and the New Testament, use Emmanuel, God with us. I mean, you know, but they don't want you to use Gabriel, uh, the name that Gabriel told Mary to use and Joseph, which was Jesus, you know, Using a name other than Jesus is a denial of the Greek New Testament. And I've done numerous studies on that. Uh, you know, the, um, the Greeks had conquered, under Alexander the Great, they had conquered the entire Middle East. I mean, Cleopatra was a Greek. She wasn't Egyptian. They said she was one of the most beautiful women that ever lived. I bet you she was blonde. Wouldn't surprise me, you know. But, uh, you know, they, they conquered from uh, parts of India all the way to the Middle East. I mean, Alexander's uh, empire that he conquered was vast. When he died at a very young age, I think he was in his 30s when he died, some people think he might have been poisoned, but eh, who knows? The Lord might have taken him for uh, him pointing, you know, pushing himself up to be some kind of a god. But he had one of the largest empires in the history of the world. But his empire was divided up between his four generals, believe it or not. And then uh, two of his generals started fighting each other, which weakened them severely. And then along came Rome. And, you know, it's easy, you know, when you get people fighting each other of the same family, well, and you've destroyed each other, well, then don't be surprised when somebody else walks in and takes over. But Greek was the common language in the Middle East when Jesus walked as a man on the earth. I mean, even Rome, Greek was taught as a second language. And, uh, you know, you think, uh, you know, when Pilate was talking to Jesus, was Pilate talking to Jesus in Latin? Was Pilate talking to Jesus in Hebrew? I doubt it. I doubt it. I severely doubt it. And there's no mention, no mention of an interpreter in the Bible. I'm not saying there couldn't have been one, but it's not mentioned. No, they were probably speaking Greek. I mean, let's face it. Paul went to all those Greek cities and he spoke to him in Greek. You know, that's why they hate Paul. 
But Greek was the common language. I mean, the Greeks had conquered the area for a couple hundred years. And it's sort of like, hey, go down to Miami. And guess what? English is a second language. And I'm not joking. I'm really not. I actually got a traffic ticket. A, uh, I think it was a Cuban cop. I don't remember. You're talking a long time ago. Wrote me a ticket. I went to the courthouse to pay it. You know what? Not one person there would speak to me. The cashiers. Not one person there would speak to me in English. They absolutely refused. I, can you believe that? This, it's not America. You know, you know, uh, they're not joking when they say press two to speak for Espanol. You know, press, you know, when you're on the telephone. Preso dos en Espanol, por favor. Yeah. You know, so when you're conquered, you speak the conqueror's language. So keep that in mind. But, uh, you know, there's a reason why the New Testament was in Greek. Big reason. Anybody wants to listen to that study, I'll be happy to give you the link. So, all right, 45, Book of Enoch, verse 1. And this is the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the Holy Ones and the Lord of Spirits. And into heaven they shall not ascend, and on the earth they shall not come. Such shall be the lot of the sinners who have denied the name of the Lord of Spirits, who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation. Uh, what day is that? Well, let's take a look real quick. So what day is that? Well, Philippians 1.10, That ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Philippians 2.16, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. And what is vain? It means useless, worthless. You know, Paul didn't run in vain. And Philippians are the, what you call the residents of Philippi, a city in Greece. You know, if you live in New York, you're a New Yorker, right? Philippians. So, uh, and then there's people will tell you that the day of the Lord and the day of Christ are two different events. No, they're not. Unless, of course, you want to deny that Jesus Christ is Lord, which essentially they're doing. People that deny that the day of the Lord and day of Christ is two different events are essentially denying that Jesus Christ is Lord, which is fine with me if they want to. And then... Uh, Lord has a place for people like that. Yeah, smoking section. In Zephaniah, Z-E-P-H-A-N-I-A-H, Minor Prophets, those are the little tiny books just before the New Testament. Chapter 1, verse 15. That day, what day? The day of the Lord. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble, and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. See, those that are in Christ, the day of the Lord is, is a day of salvation, but to those that are unsaved, it's a day of wrath. Ezekiel 30 and verse 3, For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day, it shall be the time of the heathen. 
the time of the heathen. Oh, yeah. So the day of the Lord is for them. Well, let's. <laughs> how about Joel? Another minor prophet. Chapter 1, verse 15. Alas, for the day. For the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. So, big difference. All right, let's go back to Enoch, chapter 2. And into the heaven they shall not ascend, and on the earth they shall not come. Such shall be the lot of the sinners who have denied the name of the Lord of Spirits, who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation. Hmm. What is tribulation? It's just a fancy word for trouble. Verse 3. On that day, mine elect, one shall sit on the throne of glory and shall try their works, and their places of rest shall be innumerable. Do you know we're going to be judged by our works? Not salvation, but our, oh, I don't know, uh, kind of like a position. You know, so uh, let me take a look. In Revelation chapter 2, in verse 23, Jesus says, And I will kill her children with death. Uh, speaking about uh, Jezebel, Mystery Babylon. Uh, and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give out unto every one of you according to to your works. So, if our works are evil, he's going to give you that. If your works are good and righteous, well, you'll be uh, rewarded. Oh, yeah. Revelation 3, 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. All right, let's look at Revelation 20, verse 12 and 13. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. There's two books, at least. There's the book of life, and there's the book of, well, yeah, yeah the other book. You don't want to be in that book. Yeah, the book of life. So, uh, yeah, it says the sea is going to give up their dead. Boy, I tell you what, the Pacific Ocean is going to be giving up a lot of dead from World War II. A lot. A whole bunch. Boy, I tell you, America was a different country back in World War II. A lot different country. We still had churches that somewhat taught the truth, and we still had believers uh, I don't even think we have 10% of what we had back then. Uh, but that's just my guess. I don't know. In Revelation 22, 12, And behold, I, Jesus, I come quickly, and my reward, my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. So, either you're going to be rewarded good, or you're going to be rewarded for evil. Oh, yeah. And 
And for a last one, Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. And if you don't think works are important, um, may I suggest you read James chapter 2? James chapter 2 is just such a, it's, it explains things very well. I would sure hate to believe in Jesus and have no works. I mean, even the devils believe in Jesus, but their works are evil. So, uh, let's see. James chapter 2. Yeah, James, uh, James had a mother named Mary and a father named Joseph, and he grew up with a guy named Jesus. And I'll guarantee you, he knew a couple things or, you know, a thing or two about Jesus and his teaching. I will guarantee it. Matter of fact, uh, from what I understand, he became a bishop of a church. And I believe he died for the faith. That's, I don't know, I'd have to look it up. But uh, being, being in Christ back in the old days with the uh, you-know-who's running around, didn't have too long of a lifespan. Of course, the prophets didn't have a very long lifespan either. Prophets didn't uh, live to a ripe old age and collect a retirement. No. They usually got killed. And if you want to know why things are the way they are today, May I suggest you read the book of Judges? Judges, read it. And then when you read that, uh, Jeremiah. And I did an entire commentary playlist on Jeremiah. And Isaiah. And Ezekiel. I haven't done one on Daniel because Daniel is... I'm not qualified to do a commentary on Daniel, but... Uh, yeah. All right, back to Ezekiel, verse 3. On that day, mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory, and shall try their works, and their places of rest shall be innumerable. And their souls shall grow strong within them when they see mine elect ones, and those who have called upon my glorious name. Number four, then will I cause mine elect one to dwell among them, and I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. Huh. Where is that in the Bible? Oh, let's take a look. You know, not to toot my own horn, but um, one of the best Bible studies I ever took in Bible college was the uh, the book of Isaiah. It really opened my eyes. I had read it before, but I never, there was a lot of things I didn't catch. You know, uh, every time you read the Bible, it seems you find something new. But Isaiah is kind of like a mini Bible. It really is. Uh, the first, I think it's 39 chapters, follow what's like the Old Testament. And then the, the from 40 to 66 chapters follows the New Testament. And then in Isaiah 65 and 66, it's like reading the book of Revelation. So let's take a look at Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Hmm. How about Isaiah 66, 22? 
For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. How about 2 Peter 3.13? Wherein, uh, uh, I'm sorry, nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, Wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, let's go to Revelation 21, 1 and 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, not the uh, polluted thing that's going on over there now, uh, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right, let's go back to uh, Enoch. Oh, one more thing. Oh, okay. Uh, Revelation 21 verse 23. And the city, New Jerusalem, had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. John eight twelve. Jesus is the light of the world, right? Uh, let's see. All right, let's go back to... Let's see. Verse 4, Enoch. Then will I cause mine elect one to dwell among them, and I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. And I will, verse 5, and I will transform the earth and make it a blessing, and I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it, but the sinners and evildoers shall not set foot thereon. For I have provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones, and I have caused them to dwell before me, but for the sinners, there is judgment impending with me, so that I shall destroy them from the face of the earth. Uh, you know, people, let me tell you something. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to... Well, maybe I'll do something here. Um, Christians... And those righteous in the Old Testament will be given their reward first. That's going to be the first resurrection. The second resurrection is going to be those that didn't make the book of life. So they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And, uh, yeah. So, there's there's only two resurrections. You know, and, and if people thought about only two resurrections, the pre-trib rapture falls apart. You know, if they have a pre-trib a pre rapture before uh, the tribulation... What happens to all the people that die for the faith in the tribulation? Where do they go? They're not going to be in the second resurrection for punishment. No. No. When, when the Lord returns in glory at the end of the tribulation, when the last saint has been killed, and God the Father's had a belly full of the wickedness of this world, and tells his son, go get my bride, she's ready. That's it. There's not a one and a half resurrections. No. There's only the first resurrection and then there's a second resurrection. That's it. But people don't want to study the Bible. They don't want to read. You know, they want to listen to Billy Graham or, or Kenneth Copeland or T.D. Jakes or whoever they listen to. I don't know. 
you know, be better off throwing your TV away and reading the book. But uh, and and James chapter one, ask the Lord for understanding. But they don't want to do that. No, 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 no. We we're we're gonna listen to the TBN crowd and watch them tell you to send their tithe. Oh yeah. All right, 46. And there I saw one who had a head of days. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> ah, and his head was white like wool. This is right out of Revelation chapter 1. I'm, I'm going to read that. you got to realize, I haven't read this in 25 years. Really. I, it's been, I read it once. And the only reason I'm doing it now is because somebody asked me to do a commentary on it. So I thought, okay, I'll do it. And his head was white like wool. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness like one of the holy angels. Wow. All right, let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 1. verse. We'll start in verse 9. I, I don't want to make this a two-hour study. Um, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, who was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Do you know that of all the apostles, John was... Not John the Baptist, but John, the Apostle. Do you know he's the only Apostle, according to history and legend, that didn't die uh, for the faith? According to legend, they tried to kill him, and they couldn't do it. So they banished him to the Isle of Patmos. I mean, seriously. You know, it makes you wonder. So, I don't know how true that stuff is, but... It wouldn't surprise me. And by the way, John is called the disciple that Jesus loved. Verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Ah, see? Day of the Lord, day of Christ. Same thing, right? And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha, the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega, the last letter of the Greek alphabet. That's like saying, I'm A to Z. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, Asia Minor, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Yeah, Laodicea was, the uh, Lord was not happy with Laodicea. Did you know that there was a church council, and they were trying to decide what books belonged in the Bible? And the Laodicean church representative said, uh, we don't think the book of Re Revelation belongs in the Bible. Well, uh, duh. Yeah, you don't like it for a reason. So, yeah, because they had, you know, the Gospel of Thomas and all these other garbage books laying around. And, uh, you know, maybe they had, maybe they had Enoch too. I don't know. And decided, uh, this doesn't belong in the Bible. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I think everything is in the Bible that needs to be in the Bible. That's my opinion. Uh, I don't see the book of Enoch as being anything, any kind of extra enlightening. So, all right. Verse 12. And I, John, turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, we're going to read that in the book of Enoch, 
you know, Jesus called himself the Son of Man. He also claimed to be the Son of God. And he was both. One like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white, 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 like wool. Ain't no black sheep in that family. His head and his hairs were white, like wool, as white as snow. Snow white. Oh, yeah. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Somebody pointed out to me, I always thought he had red eyes. No, probably not. Um, when you turn on a gas stove, what color is the flame? Blue. Oh, yeah. Think about that. So his head... His head and his hairs were as white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, like unto fine brass, as if they are burned in a furnace. When you take brass and burn it in a, sur for a furnace, it burns white with a, a tinge of brown. Yeah. And his voice... As the sound of many waters. Hmm. Remember that, son of man. All right, Enoch 46, verse 1. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man, and his face was full of graciousness like one of the holy angels. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning that son of man, who he was and whence he was and why he went with the head of days. And he answered and said unto me, this is the son of man who hath righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness and who revealeth all the treasures of that which is hidden. Because the Lord of spirits hath chosen him, and whose lot hath the preeminence before the Lord of spirits in uprightness forever. Verse 4. And this Son of Man, whom thou hast seen, shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats, and the strong from their thrones, and shall loosen the reins of the strong, and break the teeth of the sinners. And he shall put down the kings from their thrones and kingdoms, because they do not extol and praise him, nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. See, the Lord raises up kings and puts down kings. Now, I believe this ties in to ja Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changeth the times and the seasons. Doesn't God change Spring to summer and summer to fall and fall to winter. Oh, yeah. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Oh, yeah. God removed the king of Babylon and gave it into the hands of the Medes and the Persians. And then God took it away from the king's of Media and Persia and gave it to the Greeks. And then he took it away from the Greeks and gave it to the Romans. Oh, yeah. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise. You want wisdom? Read James chapter 1. Ask the Lord in prayer for wisdom 
and then read his word. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and if you read the Bible, well, you're wise. And knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. You know, evil people always do their works. Well, not always, but usually there are things in darkness, right? So, all right, back to Enoch. Uh, five. And he shall put down the kings from their thrones and kingdoms, because they do not extol and praise him, nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. And that's exactly why the Lord removed uh, Nebuchadnezzar for a while. Nebuchadnezzar got probably, Babylon was probably the greatest kingdom that ever existed on the face of the earth. And Nebuchadnezzar said, have not I created this kingdom by my own? Well, that's the Bob paraphrase. But uh, and the, what did the Lord do? He uh, smote him with madness in a sense and gave him the, the mind and heart of an, of an ox. And he ate grass. Oh, yeah. They don't nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. And he shall put down the countenance of the strong and shall fill them with shame. And darkness shall be their dwelling. Oh, boy. Darkness shall be their dwelling. All right, so darkness shall be their dwelling and worms shall be their bed and they shall have no hope of rising from their beds because they did they do not extol the name of the lord of spirits and raise their hands against raise their hands against the most high uh what is a symbol of communism isn't it a raised fist oh yeah it's a raised fist is their symbol they raise their fist their hands against the most high god and tread upon the earth and dwell upon it and all their deeds manifest unrighteousness and their power rests upon their riches oh yeah has anything changed the world bank the central banks their power rests upon their riches, and their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands, and they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits. So let's take a look at darkness. All right, let's go to Isaiah 14. 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to Meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp. Uh, you ever heard of somebody referred to as being pompous? You know, pomp is a word has to do like with kings, you know, over the top, right? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. The worm, the worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? which didst weaken the nations. Hmm. Oh boy. Isaiah 66, 24. I told you, Isaiah follows 
the New Testament, uh, the Bible. Isaiah 66. The uh, Bible has 66 books. Isaiah has 66 chapters. Seriously, Isaiah is an excellent uh, study. I mean, I, I, you know, probably missed some things, but, uh, you know, it, it's, I really enjoyed that study. Isaiah 66, 24, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. There's that fire from hell, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. What is abhorring? Hatred. You know, something you, you hate. In Job 10.22, a land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. Woof. Doesn't sound too good. In Matthew 25, Jesus in verse 30, um, Oh, this is the pro uh, the unprofitable servant. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, we did, let's see, back to Enoch. Uh, verse 6, And he shall put down the countenance of the strong, and shall fill them with shame, and darkness shall be their dwelling, and worms shall be their bed, and they shall have no hope of rising from their beds, because they do not extol the name of the Lord of Spirits, and raise their hands against the Most High, and tread upon the earth, and dwell upon it. And their, all their deeds manifest unrighteousness, and their power rests upon their riches. And their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands, you know, gold and silver, probably. And they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits, and they persecute the houses of his congregation congregations. Isn't that what the rich do? They, especially today, I, well, things have never changed. The rich persecute God's children and the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits. James chapter 2, I knew we were going to get there. Verse 1, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons? For if they're, um, let's see. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, you know, nice clothes, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, you know, bad clothes, you know, smelly, ripped, open, ripped apart, you know, the clothes don't match. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. No, not sodomites, but, uh, you know, happy clothing. And say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. Oh, yeah, we, oh, here, you with the nice clothes and the gold ring. Here, sit here in the nice place, you know. We want to make sure you get the collection plate passing by, right? And say to the poor, Stand thou there. Well, you know, we don't have room for you to sit down. Stand over there or sit here under my footstool so, you know, you can smell my feet, right? No. Are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, listen, my beloved brethren. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? 
and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you? Do not rich men oppress you? Has anything changed in 2,000 years? No. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? And what is that worthy name that you're called? Christians, followers of Christ. They blaspheme that name. That's why they, they won't even use the name Jesus. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Oh, yeah. So, this is probably one of the best books, chapters and books in the whole Bible. I would say you should, you should definitely read it. Uh, but hey, that's just my opinion. All right, so let's, uh, I'm going to make this the end of chapter 46. And uh, let's see, what did I do? 45 and 46, right? Yeah, yeah, 45 and 46. All right, um, we're going to close it out here. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All glory to him.